Put this lick on loop and you're gonna be mashing rope like Paul Gilbert in no time. Hey there kids and welcome to a brand new installment of Weekend Wang Shop. Here's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. A lot of Paul Gilbert's fastest licks use a combination of alternate picking and legato, and I think that's really the backbone of where his incredible speed and precision comes from, because to execute licks like that, the hands have to both be perfectly in the groove and in sync with each other. Because it doesn't matter how perfect your picking hand technique is, if your left hand isn't perfectly in the groove, nothing good's gonna come of it. Today's lick is gonna help you get both hands perfectly in sync with each other. It's also just a great phrasing concept to add into your soloing. And as always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Sign up today for all kinds of bonus goodies. This week, everybody who supports my channel is gonna get access to downloadable tabs to go along with this lesson, plus practice tracks that I made, plus the MIDI files so you can build your own perfect practice session. Also filmed a supplementary video to go along with this one, showing you guys my approach to practicing the legendary Paul Gilbert lick. You know the one. And how we can practice it more better to help us become the next generation of Shred Eye Knights. So don't delay, sign up today, patreon.com slash Guitars. Gear-wise for today's video, I'm playing my incredible Sir Modern T, which I just adore, and I've got that going into my Friedman JEL 20 amp. Yeah, let's hear that hot lick at stepdad speed. Okay, so this lick is based around the E major scale and we're using two adjoining three note per string scale patterns. First one here starts on the root note E on the A string fret number seven. Here's how it looks. The next pattern is gonna descend through the scale a whole step up from where you ended. So we're gonna start off here on the F sharp note on the high E string and just walk down the scale like this. We could put both patterns together and end up with a big shape that looks like this. So now that you got the layout of the scale pattern, let's talk about the phrasing. Start off here by picking the first note on the A string and then hammering on the next two. After this, keep going up through the scale and pick all three notes on the next string. So you have pick, hammer, hammer, pick, pick, pick. That's the entire phrasing concept that we're working with here. Do one pick stroke, finish the string out with legato, and then pick all three notes on the next string. Now that you made it up this far in the scale, play the same idea but starting from the D string. So pick the first note, hammer on the next two, pick all three on the next string. Restart from here with one pick stroke, continue with three, restart with one, continue with three. So now we've walked up the scale, we should have this. You'll notice when I'm playing it slow, I'm playing those pick strokes really articulately. I think that's a great way to practice this, just to make sure you're getting really accurate response on those strings. After this, we're gonna start the descending portion. So take that little finger and come up a whole step. And here we're gonna play the same idea, but with pull-offs instead of hammer-ons. So you're gonna pick this first note, and then do two pull-offs like this. Go to the next string here and pick down all three notes. And then restart from there with a single stroke and two pulls. Three pick strokes on the next string. Restart. Keep going from there. 
And then you're back to where you started here. So you can just loop the lick and cycle the entire thing up and down a few times. So all together it should sound something like this. And now let's talk about the left and right hand tips to get this thing down more better. Okay, one thing I want you guys to be really aware of here is your timing with your hammer-ons and your pull-offs. This is the real make or break of the entire lick. And that's what's really gonna help you get your hands in sync. So here's the problem. Whenever a lot of us are picking stuff, we're very rhythmic with it whenever we put this guy in the driver's seat. It's like it gets really groovy whenever this guy's in charge. But a lot of us, whenever we do hammer-ons pull-offs and put this guy in the driver's seat, stuff can get really, I'd say slurry is a good way to put it. It's not necessarily locked into the beat. We're just snapping down those hammer-ons and pull-offs as fast as we can get them. The great thing about this lick is that it has you going back and forth between this guy being in control and this guy being in control. And you'll really notice if especially your left hand is really rushing those hammer-ons. Here's what it shouldn't sound like. Hear how like the left hand is really rushing and kind of snapping down really quick on those hammer-ons and pull-offs because we don't have to wait on the picking hand? That's not what you want to hear. You want to hear this as perfectly even sextuplets, triplet, 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 as you go through this. Try to keep it nice and even and smooth. This is actually way harder to do slow than it is fast, for me anyway. <laughs> Definitely be sure to practice that with the practice tracks that I'm putting up over on Patreon. Use that MIDI file to put this in your DAW of choice and put it at any speed that you need to. But especially practice keeping that left hand in the groove. This is really essential because I think a lot of players out there think that their picking hand sucks when in reality it's that their fretting hand is just not in the groove. I know that's been the case with me. I always blame this guy for all of my mistakes that I make, but in reality this guy is blowing it just as much if not more. So it's really important to work on that groove and that timing with your fretting hand. Now as far as the picking goes here, here's what you really gotta concentrate on. There's not that much going on. Cause even if you think about it, when you play this lick really fast, it might sound like this and sound like a lot is going on with the picking hand. <laughs> But even at that speed, if I isolated just what my picking hand was doing, it would just be this. It's nothing crazy, right? It's like one pick stroke on the A, and then on every other string I'm playing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I bet you can do that at that speed already. But then when you put the left hand notes on top of that, it really sounds like a lot is going on, but we don't have to tell anybody. It's actually not that bad for the right hand. Now, I saw Paul Gilbert talk about this in a lesson one time, and it confirmed what I was already doing, which is this divide and conquer kind of approach, where I would just kind of take the strings and mute them and just work on what this hand is doing in the lick. Kind of like what I did a second ago, where I just muted the strings and played the picking. And then if I played the entire thing up and down through the lick and cycled it, it sounded like this. We 
whenever you isolate the right hand like that, you realize it's nothing all that crazy, even at the speeds that Paul plays this at, which means it really is all the more important to worry about this hand. Odds are this hand will do the right thing because that's not really that hard to do. So it really takes concentrating on the fretting hand to make sure that everything is lined up, synced up, and in the groove. That divide and conquer approach is exactly how I got these licks down years and years and years ago, so I know it'll work for you too. And the cool thing about that phrasing idea is it's really versatile and you can apply it to any other three note per string scale pattern that you know. Like maybe this uh, six string A Lydian scale, right? I could play that same idea through that. Or I could even sequence it so that I go through a few strings and then go back a string. Or even inside of your typical like A Dorian blues scale thing where you got the three notes per string on the top like this. Another thing I really like doing inside of there is adding in some palm muting onto the hammer-ons. It makes them sound a little bit more aggressive, more like pick strokes, and then I'll let the palm muting off for the picked notes. Sounds like this. Really versatile phrasing concept that's going to get those hands in sync and get you playing faster than a cheetah in a speedboat. So there you go guys, some Paul Gilbert inspired phrasing that you can use to melt faces across the globe. Really cool one to use to practice with and warm up, get those hands in sync with each other. And again, you can toss it into really any scale that you see an opportunity for that type of phrasing pattern. So try it out, let me know what you think about it. Get even more out of this video by signing up to that Patreon page over at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. You'll get the tab, you'll get the bonus video that goes along with this, the practice tracks, all the works, plus tons of other bonus lessons, backing tracks, and so much more. Thanks so much for watching the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold right here on my channel. Well guys, it's been fun as always, but I've got some faces to melt, and I recommend you guys do the same. Let's click it. More picking.